Um, so I'm Aaron Soriano. I'm the uh, senior commercial sales rep at Hermes Landscaping in Lenexa, Kansas. And I sell to general contractors primarily and some developers. And I'm also the president of ASPE Chapter 32. And also the programs chair for the SME Academy. So I'm lucky. It's been so fun recently. I can't tell you what's been going on, but it's been fun. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, when will you do some, how many people here do some sales? How many people are estimators that do some sales too? Most of you, okay, good. So, uh, a lot's happened in the market recently, you know, with COVID and just the progression of the bid document system, AI, you know, we can go into all kinds of cool stuff that's happening out there, but I want to hit on the big stuff that will help you solve more work if you want to, right? And uh, so when we can do it, uh, I think I work 24-7, you know? I'm a walking marketing machine, right? I'll see somebody at Walmart, see my Hermes shirt? Always wear your brand, by the way. Teresa, you're really good. Teresa's really good at that. Always wear your brand. Drive your brand if you can, right? Number two, uh, pre-qualification. Who knows what pre-qualification process is? Okay, so this is a big deal, right? So if you work for any of the bigger general contractors, you've got to be pre-qualified, right? You've got to update your financials every year, update your OSHA logs every year. You have to show your post your EMR every year. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? These, these are things that they're evaluating you by, right? Okay, subcontractor database is kind of the same thing as a pre-qual system. Pre-bid, why go to a pre-bid? You know what I tell you about landscapers? The last one they saw is the first one they call. Why do I do this, right? Because I saw you at that deal, man. Why don't you come by my office? Well, there's a new magic that happened during COVID. It's called social media, right? So post something. I don't care how goofy it is. Just post it every week on social media, on, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, right? I don't care how goofy. I posted one the other day with you with a big catfish, huh, Teresa? Oh, no, you didn't. Are <laughs> you not my Facebook friend? Go on Facebook. And you know what? I got an old Italian guy. You know what he said? You didn't kill those fish, did you? Oh, they tasted really good. Yeah. I said, it was good. I'm like, no, we just caught them and make them pets. What do you think, dude? Uh, pre bid meetings, publicly open bids, why attend? Because it's not, it doesn't matter who you know, it knows, who knows you. And just be yourself. We're goofy, right? Who's here from ASPE? So we put on presentations at the Hereford House, come and join us for some prime rib. And then you can watch a presentation on, on selling you know, business, business development. It doesn't matter. Kansas City is a great market. People want you to be your real self. You know, have some fun. What's a, anybody do scope reviews? Or D-scope, right? Why do you want to do a D-scope? Because it means you're in, right? You're at least one of the, you're shortlisted. Hey, you want to D-scope your bid? Heck yeah, it means I'm shortlisted. I'm, I'm short, you know, I'm shortlist, right? Um, what's an experience sheet? I'll show you some examples of what we use. Value engineering is one of the most important sales tools today. You know why? Because every job we bid now, they're saying, you guys got three to five VE things we can put on here? Why is that? Because when they tried to buy it for $5 million last year, now it's $5,500,000, right? So these owners are like scraping for uh, value engineering, right? Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. But uh, I'm going to skip through a lot of this because it's uh, a lot of noise. Um, okay, I saw this in Forbes magazine the other day, and uh, you guys have heard of LinkedIn. It is the most powerful professional database in the world today, right? It's probably the only one that I use other than Facebook, Twitter, and uh, YouTube. But we're so much more than we first appear, but it's always we're interacting with others. You know what this refers to? What happened during COVID? All the in-person meetings went away, didn't they? And you had to keep your face out there. Do you know that today, before COVID, 50% of all 50% of all meetings in construction were held virtually before COVID. All right, Te Microsoft Teams, uh, what is it, uh, Zip, uh, Zoom, right? You know what the statistic is today? Less than 25% of all construction meetings today are held in person now. 
I don't think it's ever going to go back. So, use LinkedIn if you can. If you can. Post, take a picture of your guys doing the work, whatever it is, because we're never going back to Class A office for everybody, right? You drive through these campuses, you see see-through buildings. They're leased sometimes, but they're empty. What did CERN do? Anybody know what CERN did? Everybody go home. Look at that, that $2.3 billion building over there now, right? It's empty. So you got to have a way to get known or see. People want to see your face, right? Are you still alive? You know, are you still, are you still a landscape? Are you still? So do what you can to use LinkedIn. It's free, right? It's not really free because your time's not free. Okay, we'll talk about pre bid social media marketing, networking for business development, we'll go on all that. Um, set a schedule. So, you know what they found out? A lot of salespeople, uh, business development people, don't keep a schedule. They get to Friday at 4 o'clock, oh crap, I didn't call 50 people this week. Just make room. <laughs> and you can sit in your car on your cell phone and call your customers, right? Right? I call you, I call you, hey, how's my bid look, right? Great. That's all <laughs> great. great. Um, you're, you're nice to know because I've known you through different companies, you know. Um, people don't leave this industry. Once they're in construction, they never leave. I'm serious. They might go to real estate for a month and go, oh crap, no, 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 I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, so treat people like gold and study people, right? Go on LinkedIn, where do you go to school? Where's he been? How can I talk to him and make a relationship, right? So a net, a, Networking event, this is considered a networking event, right? Because there's people here that can buy my product, right? So going to chamber events is useless for a landscaper because it's a bunch of people selling insurance, right? Uh, nothing wrong with that, but um, I only go to meetings where there's people that can buy my product. You don't go to be sold. Huh? You don't go to be sold. No, I don't. Never try to sell me. I'm running too fast. I'm going to chase them, right? And we've got these people in this room that could buy my product. I know several of them that, uh, so it's pretty cool being in front of them like this. Um, take a leadership role in your company. If someone says, hey, who's going to do this pre-call form because they won't send us a bid invite until we have a pre-call form filled out, who's going to do it? you got to become kind of abrasive and say, hey, 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 this pre-call takes, you know, it's 17 pages of pre-call information. Someone's got to do it. Well, that's why I said when I take a leadership role, it means the salesperson or anybody pushing for sales should be talking about making sure those pre-calls are filled out. It's a, it's a lot of work sometimes. We're pre-calling about 15 companies and it's a lot of work. And I got it assigned to our executive admin, so. Um, so work on your social media networks, we'll talk about that later. Um, why go to publicly open bids? Meet the GC, meet the owner, meet the developer, meet the architect. You want to be known by everybody you can't be, be known by. If you're shy, I was the shyest person in the world. When I was a kid, I couldn't even say hi to people. Then I managed quicker for five years and got out of that shell. But uh, don't, be, don't be shy, don't, don't wait till everything's perfect to talk to people. How many people have more bids on their bid board right now than ever before? It's insane what's going on out there, right? We're bidding jobs two or three times, that doesn't help. But we are seeing today, this date, the third, I said we have more bids on our bid board than we've ever had in 20, over 20 years. If there's something going on, I'm not sure what's going on yet. But it's insane right now. Okay. Okay, so if you're tip on the bottom, if you're a low responsive bidder and you're higher than injured estimate, and uh, you guys ever go to public bid openings, walk to the front room and say, I can do that job for what I got in there. What do you mean? Well, we might change some things, but never be shy. If you're a little bidder, you really should be the first person they talk to about negotiating, right? Don't let them rebid it. If you, can, you don't need to rebid it. We'll do the job. We'll just cut it back a little bit, right? Try to keep the ball in play. Oh, boy. What did I do? So this is interesting. Back in 07, it took three and half calls to get someone to reach to answer their phone. Now it's eight, actually it's higher now, it's like 10. So a, one out of 10 calls might get an answer, right? What does that mean? Call, email, text, right? If I need to get a hold of you and you, you don't answer your phone, I'm gonna text you and email you too. Politely, right, politely. 
But who was I talking to this morning? What's your favorite way of getting a hold of somebody? Ask them. We're chasing some really big jobs right now. I said, what's the best way to get a hold of you? They go, well, send me your bid, and then text me, call me, text me, call me, and tell you ask her. Okay. No problem. That's what we do. So, you guys ever done a scope letter? Who does scope letters here? Okay, so they're, they're pretty well known. Um, I hate doing scope letters. It takes so much time. I'd rather say, send me your scope of work, and we'll mark off, we'll strike what's not in there. But uh, figure out a way to discuss scope and communicate scope back and forth with the customer. Oh, that screen's not on. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Hey, Zach, where's my son? Where's Mr. IT? Um, I don't know why it is. Oh, this is stuff to be one room, that's why. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, this is this little case study we did. Um, there was a public bid opening. I think I can discuss this now. I think officially I can discuss this. Uh, okay, this is a well done project here in Kansas City. Um, we were 30% higher than the low bid. Mm, I wish I could tell you who this was, because it was it's a cool project. Um, but we had budgeted this thing four times, okay? I was just telling somebody a true story. We've been a school district, we've been a big school. We budgeted it, right? You guys ever do budget bids? Why do you do budget bids? To learn a project and, and get you know favored status, right? To get some relationship with the general the new customer. We budgeted the job. Okay, here's one. We knew we weren't 30% higher than the low bid. We knew the low bid didn't have everything covered. We knew it. So after doing four budget bids, I said, give me 15 minutes and I'm gonna save you a bunch of change orders. He said, okay, come on downtown. So I went downtown, I put I said, cross off the name of the other bidder, I don't care who it is. I really don't. But we put the bid side by side. We had seventy thousand dollars in dirt work in that bid, the other one had seven. I said, You're gonna you're gonna catch chain doors bad on this deal because they didn't pick up the dirt. They figured it was on site, there's no dirt on site. This is a very urban project. He goes, All right, what are you saying? I said, get a scope of letter, get a scope of work, and have them initial all every line item, import and place dirt. You know, bring in irrigation, install irrigation, you know, bring in trees and shrubs. The guy, other guy wouldn't initial the page that said important place dirt. I got a contract the next day. Okay? Why is that? Because I was really sure we have a really good estimator. Really good estimators are like gold, right? I mean really good estimators. He said, Eric, I got this covered. It's a hundred percent, we got it, and we won the project. It's a very known well known project. I still want to talk to, to, to who the GC was because it's, he's not from in Kansas City, but I just don't want to do that. Okay, so who's in charge of pre-qualification? Hmm. I got a question. Look at that job. I mean, as an estimator on that job, you went back after and you still got that job. When we get busy, sometimes you don't let the other guy get that. That way you don't have a problem later. Wait, say that again? You know, uh, so if he's off, if you're off 30%, you know, sometimes you get a beat by 30%. It's great for you because that customer has a tendency. So sometimes that's one way, right? You know, in the bigger picture, if you've been four or five jobs, you want to be able to. Isn't that the one you don't negotiate? The one you can't stand back from and let, the, let them have their fun? Maybe, maybe. I'm not. I, I, I can't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Eric's saving the day. Uh, I, you know, so said, my question is, are you safe? If you're trying to sell every single job, absolutely. Oh, yeah. This is like every job. sell 20 or 30 percent of our jobs. I just have somebody who can lay out their bids, you know, because I was really complimented today by somebody. They said they use our bid as the example for everybody. Line, 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 right? But then it helps us because they can save us. You know, I used to work for, do a lot of work for Cerner, and the guy, Ryan, Ryan uh, Dennis Ryan said, Eric, never say the word I. I can't save you if you're on an island by yourself. Say we, right? So what I'll do is I'll put, if I can get the other bid, and look for the outlier. Right, that dirt was so obvious, so obvious. seventy thousand versus seven. I'm like, he doesn't have a cover. He's gonna come back to you for change orders. And the downtown design team, you guys have heard that word before? 
might give a little bit more, more idea what the project was. The downtown design team had zero change, no change orders allowed in the project. The project. I said, he doesn't have the dirt. If you don't give it to us, you're going to be, you're going to have a bad day, you're going to have a bad day coming up. So if you can do, if, you, if you're so sure you've got it covered, the other guy doesn't, don't be silent. You know, call it out, say it. Sometimes a guy is stupid low, right? Some guys, um, if they're stupid low, that's different. This guy was not stupid, but he was low. But he was gonna, he was gonna come back on that GC and just clean his clock later on, right? All right, so who should be doing a pre -qual? So I'm gonna talk a little, little bit later about always be qualifying. What does that mean? Remember, uh, what's that movie, uh, Tin Man, uh, always be always be closing. Remember, if you guys ever heard that? Always be closing. Is a salesperson? Baloney, baloney. People close themselves. You cannot, you cannot make someone close. But you can get them to a neutral mind where they will close. So always be qualifying. So uh, I'll go into that in a minute. But this is a uh, pre-qual forms are getting more and more important because risk management is getting more and more important. Now they're asking us for our durations. They're asking us for, I mean, down to, they want breakouts and everything. And if you don't do it, you're out of the game, right? So you better become good at scheduling for estimators because that duration, your extra duration, let's say you take extra long, that means they're gonna carry more general conditions and more time, more fees for the owner, and the owner's looking at you and them going, you guys are too high. So it won't, it won't make sense today, but watch in two years, when every man hour is going to get accounted for, you guys, OSIP and CSIP work? OSIP and CSIP? What is that? What is used to calculate your insurance premium? You guys know GDL? Hours. Man hours. Right, man hours. So if you don't know your man hours on a job and you're looking at the CSIP credit back to the owner for insurance, call, they call them insurance management fees. You're not helping sell the job, right? So get totally intimately involved in everything about the prequel, your EMR, right? Your EMR is over one. Who said that? It was uh, Bill Kenyon. Is he here today? If your EMR is over one, you're probably not going to get a Black and Beach project, right? Or Turner, or McCall, or, you know, but on, on and on. So this is a something I threw in there. Um, the first salesperson to contact a prospect. Uh, if you call somebody one time, um, that's probably one out of eight times you're going to get a job. So don't be afraid to call people. I have people, they say, Eric, I mean, you called me five times. I was just waiting until I knew for sure what, what was going on. We're expected to be, you know, very voiceful. Okay. So who's, who's responsible for selling this development? Effort? And this is subcontractor specific. I'm sorry, general contractors, but I looked at the registration logs today. It's about 90% subcontractors. But it'll help everybody. So the owner of the firm should be involved in sales, right? Because when I bring an owner to the table at a big bid opening, or not a bid opening, to a big bid review, they're like, hey, your owner's here? That really, really goes a long way. It's because at the end of the day, when the shit hits the fan, they want to know the owner, they want to know the project manager, they want to know the salesperson, right? So don't be afraid to bring all these people to your scope reviews. Bring your superintendent. If they're, if they're a kick butt superintendent, bring it to the scope review. Um, bring your estimators. Bring your, um, I bring two or three, any job over a million dollars, I'm bringing three or four people to that scope review. Because I want them to be able to say, yeah, I can do this, I, we can do that, we've got this, we've got that. We just want a job, yes, the reason I, was, I left today, we, we want a job yesterday afternoon for $2.6 million, a landscape project, okay? You better believe I've got everybody on the team sitting there on that call because that's a big deal for us, you know? And it's bonded and first call was to my bonding agent saying, do we still have enough <laughs> left? We've got the airport project, it's over four million. That's time of my bonding. We've got three schools going to Missouri, time for the bonding over there. My best friend right now is my bonding agent, right? And we have $10 million of bonding. So I'm juggling my bonding capacity to get this bigger, this big job. It's gonna go and into this year. So, uh, okay, professional, what does this even mean? Professional sort, amateur sell, right? Anybody know what that means? Anybody been in my class before? 
I haven't done it in like three years. Um, I did this, ten, this is my 10th time doing this class. But um, what that means is always be qualifying. You can always, like right now you have all these GCs. Trees, are you gonna get all the jobs you have invited, you've been invited to? Oh yeah. Oh, you are? Oh, you're pretty good. We're, we're, I just, I have to go through and take out half the jobs. You can't, you can't fit. My estimator said you can't get to them. We have a couple estimators, but um, always been to the person most likely to give you work. Does that make sense? They haven't given you any work in a long time? Well, I'll catch you next time, right? Okay, did that again. So always be, always be close with now. You're trying to close with buy, buy now. I need this for my quota, I need to get this done. They don't care. Tell them why you're the best solution, right? Tell them why you have the best uh, value. It's not about, it's about best value. You know what I sell? Did I tell everybody? I, I surveyed two <coughs> general contractors, asked them what they want from, from us as a landscaper. You know what they told me? Two words. They all said the same thing. Guess what it is? Predictable performance. That's all they want. They, they want people, you want them to know you like, you trust you, right? But you gotta be an expert too. Have somebody who's an expert on staff. I'm talking about certifications because I'm a big on that, but always be qualifying. Have they bought from us before? Do we, do we know the architect? Do we know the owner? Do we know the you know, project managers over there? You ever notice some, some GCs, you can make some good money on jobs? Because they have customers that have a lot of money and work, everything goes well. Change orders get approved quickly. Always be qualifying. Much more, do you know what? As human beings, we qualify 24-7. Do you know all day long we're qualifying? Every second of every day we're qualifying our opportunities. If you're in sales, you know. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? I work 24-7. My wife does lead generation for us. She looks at 30 plan rooms a day. Okay, well, 30 projects a day. It says not that one. She does no go. She does go. We work on Sunday morning doing go no goes on projects. <laughs> We're geeks, man. We are total geeks. We're subcontractor geeks, man. I'm sorry. But that's what we do because we got 70 guys that want to work every day, right? Okay, so social media LinkedIn is my favorite because I've got 13,000 people. Anybody here want to get 13,000 people on LinkedIn? Send me an invite. And guess what? You now have 13,000 people right below you on second tier. Most of them are construction people, okay? It took me 10 years to do that. I've been Google slapped, I've been LinkedIn slapped, you know what that means? If you invite over 600 people one day, LinkedIn will slap you, bam, you shut down. And the Dave Cook, my friend here, he, he taught me a way to get out of it. You gotta sign a paper saying, oh, I'll never do that again. Uh, but uh, really, if you guys want to, well, my name is Eric Soriano, send me a request to LinkedIn, and you'll have 13,006 people directly below you on our second tier. How cool is that? You want to find out who they are, where they went to school? Go to LinkedIn, right? I can tell you, well, there's people in this room that are not on LinkedIn, right? I bet 15% of you are not on LinkedIn at all. Because it's, it's, you know, it's like, like Facebook, you know? It's not like Facebook. Facebook's a party. <laughs> LinkedIn, it is. <laughs> you guys haven't been to Ann Cull's class on uh, selling, uh, social media for contractors. Each social media platform is different. But LinkedIn is like the professional, it used to be your resume online, now it's more about marketing you and your company online. Tell me what you're doing, what's going on? Who's in your company, you know? I'm not gonna award somebody a million dollar contract without checking them out on, on, on Google, right? Would you, Damon? Would you award a million dollar, land, any kind of a subcontract without checking out that company online first? Why? Perfect. Where'd you go to school? Thanks. Yes? Why is putting something on the computer make something legitimate? It makes, you, makes, you, it makes you love for a whole lot of feedback. It makes people keep trying to sell you insurance to have good people all the time. It makes underwriters look at the projects you do and say they can determine it as a different phase. Why does being on the internet actually hurt me being good pictures and stuff like that? Really makes you make that decision first. History. Well, there's hundreds of different touch points, okay? I'll talk about testimonials. The most powerful, by the way, the most powerful selling tool in the world is a live testimonial from a live person. 
I was trying to sell you guys, I can talk about Cerner because they're kind of out of the picture at the moment. But I saw a lot of work to Cerner, headquarter campus, directly. Anybody remember Paul Moseman, the construction that Sean Frost replaced? Anyway, I would sit there and say, all right, we want to be your new center building for 500000 He said, well, who can I call to, uh, as a reference? I don't know you, Eric. I said, well, there's a guy down at Garmin. His name is uh, Chris, Michael DePonte before him. I'll give you their cell phone number and you call them, okay? I've got a person over at the Speedway, we landscape the Speedway, call that person. Here's a guy that runs a division at Turner Construction. Here's his cell phone number, call him. Most powerful, that's the most powerful testimony you can give as a live person with a similar project, right? Now, the internet gives you a lot of exposure though. To, I don't know if you guys work past midnight, but at two in the morning, Last night, I Googled somebody at this building, right? I went on LinkedIn. Because I want to get their title right. You know those four people on that panel this morning? Their titles change, right? 25% of all your customers' titles and companies change every year. So one of my speakers, she got promoted. I want to have the right title, right? So it's 24-7 access to information. I'm not going to worry about a sub. If they don't have a website or, that's not true. My, one of my subs is not have the website but we use them a lot, right? I know what you're saying, you're saying, um, why do I gotta get on Facebook to get work? You don't, but it helps. Especially if you can, you guys ever heard of, uh, anybody ever, ever heard of uh, Toolbox Talks, George, George Headley? Google it, George Headley. He taught me what I know about, I went to school up in uh, Iowa at the Iowa Contractors Association selling and business development for subcontractors. So some of this stuff is his stuff, but that was years ago. But George Henley says, show pictures of your guys doing the work you want to sell. I can't okay. tell you how many times I've gone to a meeting and met somebody the first time, and one of the first words out of their mouth was, I looked you up on, on your website or LinkedIn, and they, they, they look you up before you ever show up. Especially when you don't know them and you don't have that history yet. How much time do you spend on those versus the negotiating jobs you're already closing? That's, that's where I'm at in 25 or most of the time we're showing. All right, so we do I more. Have, I just sell a lot of work. I, I can I'll sell myself times 10. So I just, you're good. Yeah. You're looking for a job? Always. <laughs> I need somebody. Well, what I mean, that's, that's the thing. Is you actually got to really perform it too. Oh. That's the all you want, but if you can't perform it, that bond's no joke. So I was walking through a general contractor's office 20 years ago. I was one week into my job, 20 year, over 20 years ago. And the, one of the owners of the company saw me. He goes, hey, you with earnings? I go, yeah. He goes, don't sell more work than you can do well. And he turned around and walked away. I'll never forget that statement. Predictable performance. Don't sell more work than you can do well. And we've done $12, 15000000 million of work for that guy, for his family. For his family. Um, so these are just some things. There's myriad ways of marketing yourself. Face to face is the best, right? But I call a big customer the other day. She, she said, "We're not taking any any guests in our building anymore. No no guests allowed." So I text her, call her email instead, you know. And she knows I'm, I've known her. She's been in construction for 20 years. I've seen her at more networking events. Now she's an owner. Bless you. Now she's an owner's rep. Pretty cool, huh? Never burn a bridge. Ever don't ever burn a bridge. Even if you're just pissed off. Don't burn that bridge, because one day they're going to show up and be ready to buy your product. Um, it's not who you know it, it's who knows you. Okay, so why would I do this? Why would I take a picture of our shop with a bunch of guys? You know why? What's number one? Like safety right now is huge, right? You guys know what a site-specific safety plan is? You know, I can write those in my sleep. I don't, I don't do it typically, but see, I wanted people to see we got a bunch of guys. Now they're all wearing high vis. This is an old picture, by the way. There's no high vis. I had to sell my company on going everybody into high vis, right? Ocean, everybody Ocean 10. Everybody high vis. It's marching on, and it's our responsibility. We're the, we're the front person, right? We're the we're on the bleeding edge, if you will. And we come back and say, hey, we we need to get high vis for all the workers. They don't like wearing the vests. So let's give them shirts that are high vis, right? And hats and whatever else. And now. You go, if I had this meeting today, I can show you some more pictures, they're all wearing high vis. Like 
me right there. And that's a, somebody asked us, you guys know what a top aim off ceremony is? When the highest beam goes onto a building and they weld it in place, we give them a tree. Pretty cool, huh? I put, that's downtown at the little hotel, not the Lowe's Hotel, but the little one next to it. I just took a little selfie and put it out there. What the heck, right? You know, the last, the first landscape they called, the last place I saw. I don't know why that is, but it's a weird thing. So why would I promote, anybody ever been to this show? This is the best show in the city, right there. It's free. Free booze, free food, show up. You'll see more developers in one room than any other event in Kansas City. It's called the SIOR Development Day. Why did I mark it? I have nothing to do with this thing. I'm not with any of the... <laughs> but you know what? People go, oh, so you're going to be at the show too. We have a booth that costs $1,500, well, it costs maybe $1,500. I get more leads out of that booth at that show than anything else. Okay, so here's what happened when I, I did a little social media post and I watched my LinkedIn. Who's, who sees me? See that spike in the middle? That's following a post I did that got a lot of popularity. I can't get out to 800 meetings to get seen. How many people saw me? I think it was 800 or something. Why? I can't get around to 800 networking events, but I sure can get on, on LinkedIn for you know 10 minutes. I'm in the top 4%, look at that, okay? I'm next to Gary Vaynerchuk. <laughs> and so, I'm serious, if you want to get LinkedIn to 13,000 people, just send me an invite. And I won't, you know, I had a guy, I saw a LinkedIn request, and he said, I only link it when people take me to coffee first. I was like, dude, <laughs> I invite 30 people a day, okay, every day. And only 10 accept, but anyway, I'm not going to coffee. <laughs> it's, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. So be, be out there, be seen. You're, what's your name? Owen. Owen? Yeah. Are you really well known out there? I try to be. But I have to hide six months of the year. Why's that? Because I'm a concrete contractor. I'm too busy. You want to push some snow? Well, no, no. It's no. possible. We're hiding right now, too. But you, you're hiding? We, 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 we have to have downtime. We work so hard on the six months, I have to hide. Because if I go out in public, we like this, 15 people want me to give them a bid May 15th. I'm sold out. I can't I'm not hiding. You guys are hiding. <laughs> I do have a bag that I've down over in over yeah, there. I, I have it, have it. Right now we're hiding because there's snow on the ground. We break everything we have. So you're hiding. We're going to turn it all on and we'll all break. You're hiding because the phone's ringing off the hook? We have enough to do what we need to do. It doesn't so that if uh, there's only so much money to be made right now, it's how much we can go out there and work our butts off and lose it. Right? Keep your dry out. The job's that right. It's when it's under 10 degrees, it's not much for the machine on the break. Do you want to give a presentation sometime? I'll put it in my business, though. Man, you guys must have really good quality. That's what you have to do. Great follow-up. You have to do your job. You have to perform. Man, what's your company name? Vintage Dream Art Construction. Wow. You have a great story. You just have to form the way. I mean, you guys are seasonal, too. You have to go do the right stuff at the right time. I just want to look at the cost. I watch the labor real fast. Good points, very good points. I like the way you talk. Um, I'm gonna have to get you up here on the stage sometime and tell your story. Um, so here's my favorite book of all time, Crush It, Changed My Life. It says if you go home and sit there, eat dinner, and lay on the couch for three hours, you just blew three hours of your life. Put something out on the internet, put something out on LinkedIn or Twitter or YouTube or Facebook. I didn't know anything about this stuff five years ago. We hired Ann Cole with Think Viral to train Dave Cook and I on how to get known out there. And man, we have, my sales have doubled, you know? Um, literally doubled, okay, as a result of this. Uh, jab, 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 right hooks me, don't always be selling, offer value, hey, you know, there's a concrete ad measure you should be using, there's fibers, you know, this con concrete is really complicated, you know, concrete is really, there's a lot to concrete. It's just you can't be cheap, you have to sell value. Do you use a uh, granite aggregate or a limestone? Well, I mean, there's lots of different uses for lots of different things. You have to find the value in all the different things we talk about. It. So, and all right, so. I'm not a big fan of granite personally. Because of other issues, the icing salts, it's not, they, don't, they haven't tested it real well. It doesn't perform real well under the icing conditions. Interesting. So, good to know. I, I recognize you as an expert. Okay. Well, well I would say kind of from, from experience. So people, they want to know you, like you, and trust you. Universally for sales, right? Yeah, 
but the ones that, that are highly regarded are the ones that are experts. They can know all the nitty gritty about concrete. Or nitty I talked to a guy about concrete one day. He was telling me stuff I'd never heard of before. You know, um, amazing. It was twice in my little bid, though, so we didn't use them. But um, <laughs> <laughs> he was literally twice in my little bid. And his finish work was no better. His finish work was no better. I went and looked at 10 of his jobs and looked at my little bidder, no difference in the finish work. But there's, a, uh, there's some other differences. And this guy, could, he could rock and roll, though. He, he could do a whole uh, Casey's, uh, you know, Casey's uh, convenience store in one day. Tear out one day, install it in one day. Uh, that's kind of hard to do, right? Yeah, the whole Casey's, the whole parking lot, one day. It's insane, but they do it. I can't believe it, man. Uh, but that, we didn't need that. We had a job that had plenty of schedule. We didn't need to do that. So, we did. But he was insanely good. Um, and they've helped us on our jobs. True story. I'm going to tell you a little concrete story. Is that okay? So we did a job called Linda Hall Library. Courtyard renovation. And design build. We won a national gold award through my landscape, so National Landscape Association. We had these stairs coming down. You can go on my LinkedIn and see my pictures, right? Beautiful, court, but these steps were coming down. We had to tear off the old bluestone and, and, and re, redo the concrete and put new bluestone on it, right? Like masonry type, you know, with, with mortar and stuff. And so we got to turn those bluestones off. Guess what happened? The whole set of steps caved in. You know why? It was hollow underneath, right? There was a crawl space underneath it, and they'd been putting down salt for 20 years on this concrete steps. A lot of salt. It's a beautiful library. It's actually a public library. And so our concrete sub said, oh, okay, I need $10,000 to fix that. True story. It's an absolutely true story. And I'll tell you names if you want the names about the people that did that. They fixed it, not the guy that's they tried to get us for $10,000, two weeks in the schedule to put in a new wood frame underneath and pour all new concrete steps. We're like, holy crap, man, you know, this is a, so, all right. My other concrete sub looked at it and said, I'll take care of it for free. I'm like, what? He goes, I'll have it done in two hours, or I'll have it done today. You know what he did? He went out and got a truckload of sand and backfilled that entire thing with sand like in two hours, poured the concrete, he was done. He did it in like three or four hours. It was free. True story. So who am I, I going to use next time? Well, that guy is now a general contractor. He's so smart. But I'll never forget that. One guy wanted $10,000 in two weeks. One guy wanted free in four hours. So what are you going to pick, right? Um, social selling. I don't want to go into this a lot because it's just part of the mix. But you see that right there? 83% of people that want a big project done will Google you before they use you for a project. Now, maybe not Lawrence. <laughs> and Lawrence is a nice place. I like, my, my daughter just graduated from KU. I like Lawrence. That's a... You got to the phone. When you get 200 phone calls in a day, you got to be able to answer the phone. Because if not, you're going to get 190 people. That is, you have some great stories, man. I'll tell you. We could have a class and have you help teach. How do you get more calls than you can handle? Well, but I mean, not today. Not today. Well, I mean, not today. But I might get, I'll tell you what, the first nice day of the spring, everybody needs a patio. And I can literally get 100 phone calls in one day. I could not sit there and answer every single one of them. That's all I do. Are you scalable? What's that? Can you, can you scale? Can you scale? Grow? Yeah, I'm popping up and up and down. Yeah, I mean, you can't grow, but then again, how many patties do you want to do? There's only so much money. What jobs are you picking? That's the, the thing about everybody. Always be qualified. Not just the yeah. customers, qualify the jobs. Right. Does it work for my guys? Are my guys going to be safe? Are they going to be happy? I've got guys, if I don't work on Saturday, they get pissed. You know what I'm saying? It depends on your guys. Workers are like gold right now. Oh my God. Um, Websites, you gotta have a website. I, I recommend a website. 
But LinkedIn's a lot, LinkedIn's just darn near as good. Get some awards. If you get an award, put it up on you know LinkedIn. We won this in 07, we won the Garmin International Courtyard. That was a cool job. Anybody know that GC was in this job? Does anybody know? Okay. Huh? huh? Close. They did before and after, but this was a different team. We, we, we got invited to a design build team, we went out and golf the first day. That was so cool to me. A charrette, you guys know what a charrette is? He's such a design with the civil engineer and everybody. And we won an award for it. That was so fun. Um, all right, here's some groups you should belong to if you want to get out and see, meet people. Um, Urban Land Institute is one of the best. I'm not a member currently because I, I only belong to five groups. And that, I used to belong to 10, but my owner said, get down to five because um, you got to spend more time working on bids. So, uh, no, true, true story though. I love Urban Land Institute. I belong to builders. We belong to builders. That's not personal membership. We do not belong to American subcontractors. We, I do belong to DBI. I've been on the board twice. I love Design Build Institute of America. Great meetings. In fact, next Tuesday, the 9th, I can't be there, but they're down at the Grand Street Cafe on the plaza. They're going to have a presentation on their current status of the KCI Airport Replacement Terminal. Right? Pretty cool. Uh, ASP, I've been president. I've been. Uh, all kinds of stuff. I love this group. NAWIC is, who knows what NAWIC is? What is it? National Association of Women in Construction. Are you a member? I have been. Good group. They did most of my, they scholarship most of my education. Wow, where'd you go to school? Uh, Missouri Western, Michigan K State. What's your degree, uh, what's your major? Construction Engineering and Engineering Management. And what was the scholarship based on? Did you have to write a paper, or did you have to? No, it was just a member scholarship at that point in time. You just put in the application? I joined the member, I joined as a member, and it was an active member. So NAWIC? And they financed a portion of my education. Because you became a member because of NAWIC. I became a member when I was going to school. Student I, chapter? No, it was a full chapter. But I was working as an intern, so I could qualify for full membership. And you got full membership, and you got a full scholarship? Talk to Katie out in the lobby to leave here. Because okay. she's our scholarship chair for this next scholarship we're giving out. That's a really good story, by the way. An okay. intern, where'd, where'd you intern at? Um, I interned at the light car company, local oh, light car company. But I, I was at the Society of Women Engineers, which is an association I've been active in. And they asked the women in the organization to stand up to the scholarship by Society of Women Engineers. And they went in front of three quarters of the room, stood up. Pretty powerful. So tell me this, your internship, what town, what city was it in? St. Joseph. Where are you from? I'm from St. Joseph. Okay, let me ask you a question, because I'm, I'm trying to, I just got back from K-State talking to the Orb students up there about you know, becoming an intern with us. If you have a, an internship in St. Joe, it's easy, right? Because you can stay with mom and dad probably? Yeah, a lot of them do. I mean, we have four interns and they're all in the common. What if you had an internship in a city that you don't have anybody to stay with for free. Would you want the uh, your housing paid for too? That's Let's see. Cool. I mean, that, that would pitch you the top people for sure. I'd get more people if I included housing in the internship? Uh -huh. Okay. I knew it. I knew it. Okay. So go to where your customers go. Reserve the table. <laughs> Who likes those shooting? Yeah. You guys like sporting clays? Who likes catfishing? Yeah, see? We have catfishing. It's called fish catching. We don't go fishing, we go fish catching, right? 510 pounds at a time, right? We, we catch fish, don't we? We, we hire the best guys at Lake Tournament, and we catch fish. 500 pounds that day, nine of us? 510 pounds we caught. Yeah. Yes. And that was only like four hours. Yeah. That's we stayed all day. I, I've been, I'm still eating crappie. Uh, love it, but that's a good thing to do, right? Okay, how do you work a room at a networking event? You can Google this. Shake hands and hand out cards, man. Say whatever you want, just say something. Hi, I want to work for you. <laughs> how hard is that to say, right? Hey, I'd like to work for you guys. Uh, there's a book on it. I'm at a networking event. What do I do now? 
hand out cards and shake hands. Say hi, right? Just be happy, be friendly. Uh, people, when everything else being they work with their friends. Uh, I'm not blocking you guys for this picture, am I? Sorry about that. Um, so here's some groups that really, I'll tell you one that's not on here, is CASHI. Anybody know what CASHI is? Kansas City Area Healthcare Engineers. And when you go sit in a meeting over at St. Louis, and every one of those engineers that manages those properties has a, has a sticker in their hard hat, CASHI, Kansas City Area Healthcare Engineers. Powerful group. If you want to sell hospital work, which many of you probably do, or if you do, join CASHI, okay? And they go to their, go their events, obviously, to be seen. Uh, you know what anybody know what does? Society of Army M Engineers, something, right? Um, I, I did a slide 10 years ago, so it's kind of old. BOMA, IFMA, IRAM, AAKC. You ever do concrete work for multifamily? There you go. Join those four groups and that will work you ever want, right? As long as you work the events and get a lot of bids out there. Tip. You need to attempt a regular basis if you're gonna if you're gonna spend three hundred dollars a year to belong to BOMA, if my IRM or KEC, go to the go to the meetings, otherwise it's a waste of money. Um, or go to the planning commission meetings when you see a big project coming through C to the city hall at six o'clock at night and watch the planning commissioners review that project that you're chasing. I, I do that, I used to do that a lot. Go to trade shows, right? You guys ever been to who goes to trade shows here? Yeah, I mean, there's hundreds of people in a room that can buy your product. Just put on a big badge that says, you know, I sell concrete, or I sell landscape, right? I mean, it sounds corny, it sounds really cheesy, doesn't it? But that's how I do it. I put on something that says, you know, landscaper. And uh, they call me sometimes. Okay. I'm going to tell some names here, because this is a true story. Anybody know Red Development? Right? So I saw Dan Lowe, anybody know Dan Lowe? The guy that kind of started Red Development? He's the Pied Piper of retail, they call him. He has four customers that follow him anywhere he goes. Uh, Coldstone Creamery is one. Uh, I used to know all these, doesn't matter. But he was up there at the Legends getting ready to build the Legends at Village West. And you know what I did? I stopped him. True story, you can ask him too. I went to every time he was going to speak at an event to BOMA, to EDC, I went and watched him present about the new Legends Shopping Center, right? At the end, I would walk up to him and shake his hand and say, Dan, I would love to work for you. True story. I did that four or five times. You know what he said? He goes, you really want to work for us, don't you, at Red Development? I said, yes, I do. He said, come to Red Development's office in the plaza next Friday morning at 9 o'clock. I want you to sit in on a meeting. I went down to the plaza, I'm like, Totally open mind. And who's sitting there? Anybody know Henry Clover, architect? Anybody know Estelle Hip, the block uh, realty? Anybody know uh, Dan Lowe? Anybody? The whole team was there. They sent me down. They said, here's, here's what we got. It's called the Cornerstone of Leewood. Okay? And we're going to build it. And guess what? The landscape is double what the budget is. The landscape coming double the budget. Can you cut it in half? I said, sure. Absolutely, you know? It's way above ordinance. There's way more landscape than they were required by the city of Leewood. So I went down there every Friday for four weeks and sat in that meeting with all these big shots, you know? It was, it was wonderful. And the fourth, so we cut the, we, we designed the irrigation and we gave them the plans and we cut the landscape in half, just wiped out big planting beds that were unnecessary. And he said, uh, hey, Eric, um, so we, you go around the table, you guys been to these board meetings? And I was, a, I was wearing just normal clothes and khakis, and everybody reports on their scope. We're gonna bury the underground, we're gonna bury the power lines, it's gonna cost $50,000 a foot, whatever it was. And everybody, and El Stip, El Stip, El Stip goes, the rents need to be less than $30 a square foot, you know, to release them. All right, Eric, what's your report? I said, well, look at the irrigation design, you're gonna need two two-inch taps, and we're gonna use a two-wire controller with 200 zones, he goes, okay, all right, good. Um, when are you guys gonna get started? I said, started what? He goes, started, you know, putting in your sleeves and stuff. I said, I don't have a contract. He goes, you've been coming here for four weeks. He said nicely, I'm talking differently. He said, you've been coming to this meeting for four weeks and 
in, involved in this project, deeply involved, and you don't have a contract? I said, yeah, he looked over at Mike Hans. Anybody know Mike Hans? I don't know what he's doing today, but he said, Mike, get the guy up the contract. I swear, it's a true story. That was a $600,000 contract. And uh, it could have been 1.2 million, but I cut the landscape in half and other things. We went on to, this is an old slide, but we went on to do $3 million of work for rent development. Uh, shops at North Village, up in St. Joe. We did Adams Dairy Landing. Where's that, Blue Springs? These are million dollar jobs. Because I puppy dogged Dan Lowe, I stopped him. You can ask him, true story. And uh, I did not know the developer when this started. I was reading the business journal, you guys, you gotta read the business journal, can't see business journal, right? All the projects come through that, that paper. And I said, I'm gonna get to know this guy, Dan Lowe. And then Mark Sherman, he was under Dan as project manager. Okay. Tell stories. How many stories did I just tell today? How many stories did I just tell? A lot, right? You, you sell by storytelling. The CEOs of the Fortune 500 companies in the United States sell their mission by storytelling. Universally, all 500 CEOs. Probably a pretty good thing to get into, right? Tell stories. And have pictures. So uh, that's Garmin, up in the upper left, that's Garmin Courtyard. That was a design build. build. I presented that to Min Cow. You know, Garments, Gary Burrell and Min Cow. I got to present that to uh, Min Cow. We sold that landscape, loved it. The one in the middle is Sprint Center. The one on the left is Barry Woods Apartments. The one on the right is a retirement community down in Overland Park. And the one on the bottom there is uh, Macy's over in Lee Summit. So we put the, we call this a cell sheet, right? Somewhere in here, that's the courtyard at Garmin. That is Oh, I got some cool stories too. Anybody want to go get a beer and have some stories? <laughs> but no, really, I mean, that's how you do it, right? Now, one on the right, that is uh, Sporting Casey. That's, uh, what's it called now? Children's Mercy Stadium, right? And uh, we sold that directly to uh, a landscaper that was, we were second tier sub on that one. That was kind of wild. Okay, your brain processes visual 60,000 times faster than words. So use pictures when you can do them, right? So the um, here's some stuff. I send these out to everybody who wants to see. They don't know Hermes. Do you know more than half of our work is with out-of-town general contractors? The airport, guess who our, our contract's with? 4.1 million landscape on the airport. Guess who the contract's with? Clark Construction. Well, it's CWC, right? Clark White's Clarkson. And I'm going to have them all. It took me two years to sell that deal. But what else do I got to do, right? I got 70 guys that want to eat every day. We have 150 total guys, but I've got 70 guys that want to eat, you know, commercial work. So up on the right side, that's a Federal Reserve, that's the rooftop on a Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve Bank. People call me, have you guys ever done a green roof? I'm like, watch your email. I'm gonna send you some pictures. Federal Reserve Bank. Jones Pool Terrace at One Light Tower. I can go on and on. Beautiful, you know, become an expert in whatever it is you want to make a lot, you know. Why don't you make a lot of money? You guys track uh, job costs? Where do you make a lot of money? Chase it, right? Get into a niche. You know, like, we do painters. I've done probably 40 or 50 of them, and nobody's competing with me hardly. hardly. Okay, this is a list of all the design build projects I've done 10 years ago. I'm up to about, probably done 100 now. And I've sold 962 projects, over $100 million so far. So, Keep track of yourselves, right? Differentiation of a commodity. We're not a commodity, but the father's sending the world from it. Nobody delivers a project the way we do it. Nobody. Our communication systems, our, our submittal systems, everything is different than everybody. Right? Never, never believe you're a commodity because you're not. Um, I always tell them you got me, you know. Uh, value engineering requires. Do you guys do value engineering? Can you do value engineering in concrete? You give the two well, options. Why is interchanging? I mean, an engineer gets a little bit changes in the whole different direction. Where I'm at, sitting there looking like a dumb or blur a bit too high. But you can give them a number, right? right? No, if, you, if you're making I'm going to use mesh instead of rebar, right? What's that? I'm going to use half inch rebar. I'm going to use mesh instead of half inch rebar. But they're going to change them. They change. Oh, you got to go. Well, I mean, there's even trucks in there. They put dump trucks in there. An airplane in there. 
their changes what they're doing. Good point. It's, still, it's all still building. The rice is still building floor. No, that's what I'm doing. Floor hangers is not the same. I, you're, great points. Great. That's. I would hire you. I would, I would at least talk to you about concrete if I needed some concrete. I need a little patio down at Oakland Park. <laughs> Pay me, right? Um, true story, though. Really, you know, I'm gonna, his job is pretty much sold. Okay, do more than just cut your scope, right? Create best value. That's my favorite words right now. One of my, some of my favorite words is best value. Not cheapest, not whatever, best value. Um, you guys, anybody use plan rooms? So, you guys see what's happening in the plan room world, right? Building Connected is now absorbed uh, I square foot and uh, bit clerk, right? And every, every, so we have, we have 42 projects under contract. 12 of them are, are run through Procore. I like Procore, right? Procore, project management system, right? Or CMIC, or Building Connected, or Construct Connected, or these are planning grids. Planning grids. I heard North Point is using planning grids for everything. And I haven't, we haven't got a job directly with North Point in a couple of years, but um, this is all. Get your IT guy and say, hey, I need a screaming hot computer. I need high bandwidth. I need 300 megabits per second or more, right? My wife looks at 30 projects a day. We have Google Fiber, right? A gigabit. That was me. She can look at a set of plans with a no go. She's looking for landscaping, right? They send us everything under the sun. We get, we get good advice. There's no landscaping anywhere near it. But I need someone to go through that. I don't want my estimators doing it. My estimators, their time is valuable. We don't let them down the little plans just to look at them. They get a list every day. Here's the projects out, 30,000 or more landscape on them. And then, then we all just constantly be qualifying. We're qualifying. Uh, that one looks pretty good. This one looks better. This one looks better. Let's do this one over here. Hey, Greg, did you do that class today on, uh, it's Greg Weinberg with uh, Ernst and McDonald. Uh, did you do that class on, um, what, uh, what was the name of it? It was, it was requested by a general contractor, but it was called um, Estimating and Bidding from a Subcontractor's Perspective. Yeah. How was that today, guys? Good. Good. Was that worthwhile? Yeah. Yeah. First time we ever did that. Was, was Dave or Doug more voiceful? He was David. He was David? Yeah. Yeah. You think those guys know what they're doing? You think they know what they're doing? Yeah, pretty well, huh? It was hard to get speakers for that class. I mean, uh, a long time. Okay, so this is an admin function. Like my wife, she just looks at plans all day long. And I know there's somebody in this room that works for a company that has the same thing, but it's in, up in Iowa. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? They have a person that looks at, for like, they have four salespeople. This person just looks at plans all day long. That's all she does. And she goes, this one's good, this one's no good, right? The fence, always be qualified. Pay people to qualify it for you. Don't have to look at 100 sets of plans a day yourself because anybody can do that. We don't pay my wife near what my estimates make, right? And she loves doing it because she likes me to make sales. Um, making, so this is what, my, my point is this. If it's a go, no go decision, like concrete, right? How many square feet? probably have some kind of a minimum, right? Um, who, who else has, who else is a subcontractor here? And what do you sell? Steel. Steel. Is that like rebar, or is that? Building, building structure. What company do you work for? Midland. Midland Steel. Okay, so you're steel erectors. Yeah, steel fabricated and erectors. Nice. And you're an estimator? Yep. So they trust you? Yep. <laughs> Are you a valuable part of that company? <laughs> <laughs> cool. That is so cool. See, that is so cool. So professional sort. In other words, they're sorting down and say, "This is a good job for us. That one's not." Amateurs are like, "Sell, sell, buy, buy, buy." People don't like that. But tell me why you're the best solution for what I got going here, right? Uh, we got a mastermind group. I have several people I go to breakfast with, and we share leads. You know, we look at uh, the projects, we can share uh, but the bottom line, if you, if you want good leads, give good leads. I mean, construction project leads, right? 
thirty percent of all the projects never hit the plan rooms, right? They come in under the radar. True story. I'm going to tell you a true story because uh, you guys ever been to Gladstone? You? Huh? Okay. So, I, so you guys ever heard of uh, the Heights of London Square? Anybody worked on the Heights of London Square? So I got a phone call from a guy. Uh, he's, he, Cook, he's here. You can ask him. He said, Eric, have you heard about the Heights of London Square? I go, no, dude, what's that? He goes, name, number. Thanks, Eric. I said, thanks, Dave. It's all I need. Name and number, right? So I call this guy. I said, hi, this is Eric with Harmony. He said, I want to do your landscape in the Heights of London Square. He goes, okay. I mean, this, this is how people work, right? He goes, we're eating lunch in the plaza. You want to come down and meet with us? This is Flaherty and Collins. You guys know them? You've heard of them? True story. You can ask Dave, you can ask Flaherty and Collins. So I said, yeah, I'll be there in 20 minutes. So I run down to the Marriott in the plaza. There are three guys from Flaherty and Collins out of, anybody know where they're from? Indianapolis. Indianapolis, Indiana. Top floor. They talked about the top floor of that building, right? They said, Eric, Eric, what do you do? I said, landscaping. You know, design build and design bid build, landscaping irrigation, BMP, seed sod and irrigation. You know, what do you want? He goes, we hate landscaping. He didn't say that one. He said, we don't like landscaping because it's messy. We never get the same bids. Everybody gets messy, right? So I said, okay, I want to work for you. He said, uh, I'll tell you what, he goes, if I buy you a plane ticket, will you come to our office next Monday? Sure. So he, um, the project manager, bought me a plane ticket, Southwest, 7 in the morning, loaded KCI to Indianapolis, took an Uber over their building, met all their project managers and their accounts payable, accounts receivable, you know, and took them to lunch again. I actually bought their lunch in the plaza, then I took them to lunch again, and the third time I took them to lunch, I came back to Kansas City, they gave me a contract. It was like four or five hundred thousand dollars. You know, the concrete sub was uh, what was that? I don't remember. We, we didn't buy the concrete out, but the wall builder was MSC Hardscape. We hired them, uh, and then uh, LC Bridge Turf to decide. But that's a true story. I got a little lead from a little bird. This Dave Cook. He's here today. <coughs> Big guy. He's doing our video. Hi, Dave. We've been running together for 20 years doing this. And he gave me a you know four hundred thousand dollar lead off a phone call in about ten seconds. And closed it, got it, did it, you know, as part of my mastermind group. We're masterminds of what we do. You're probably a mastermind of steel estimating. I, I'm sure you are actually. I can tell, right? We just do this information, you know. Um, and the thing is, I get a call like that, my close rate goes up. It's 50%. If I get a referral, my closure is 50% right there. Anybody sell electrical here? Yeah. I give a guy a lead for $50 million electrical work on a phone call. And he's not here today. His name is Jim Shinefke. He was with Faith, Te Faith uh, Technologies back then. I don't know what he's with now. But on one phone call, it's called the, uh, it's called Tallgrass Creek. We won the landscape. I was out taking the guys to lunch at Dick and Jake's. And I said, you got your electrical bar on you? Because you're from one of my running buddies, right? He said, no. I said, can I have a guy call you? He's got 600 electricians on the bench. He's not even. He's really good. He called them that night. They had six estimators work all night long estimating that job. He won a $50 million electrical contract out of that. That was Erickson Construction. You guys remember them? But guess what happened? What happened in 08 and 09? The economy tanked. So his $50 million contract, you know his sales goal was a year? $50 million. One sale, in one day, he sold $50 million. The economy hit, people stopped buying places there, and it went totally, so he only sold $25 million. But that was a free phone call, I called him from, right, I walked out of Lincoln Jinks and go, Jim, call these guys. You know, he did, and he won it. Um, Erickson doesn't build them anymore, doesn't do they? Who's building that tall grass right now? I don't know. Frank, you're pretty good. We, we should network. You and I should network. You've answered every qu every question correctly so far today. I don't know anybody. You know somebody. <laughs> See, that's the network with right there. Hang out with him. I'm telling you, that's where you get free good leads. Uh, budget bids are very necessary. Um, if people use us a lot, we give them budget bids. And guess what? We learn the project, and we come back with a hard bid. We're pretty spot on at that point.
right? It gives it grows relationship. Um, they trust you more. If they've done a budget for them, they're like, all right, you've been through the numbers. You know, you, you've changed some stuff. Um, build trust and confidence. I can go on and on about, you know, building trust and confidence and getting negotiated work, right? Be friendly, then be professional. People buy from friends. When they don't speak with people buy from their friends, right? They trust you, they know you, they like you. Then you're an expert too. How many people here are certified? What's your certification? Master plumber. Master plumber? What's your concrete soap? You're a finisher. Okay, Damon, what's your certification? What's your, what's your degree in? From Pitt State? Yeah, that's a good school. It's really got a good reputation out there. Um, that's why we do your golf events, right? I don't, I don't golf. I sit the tent and I'm either, don't I? I've got projects out of that. Seriously. People say, do you want to come do some design build with us? Well, I guess. And it's, it's just corny, right? It's corny, but it works. It costs $600 to get that tent. To sit in that tent all day, baby. <laughs> the Gatorade is about 100 bucks, I don't know. Um, treat customers like gold, take them to lunch, dinner, ball games. You know, I love, I love taking people to lunch. And I always go to 1130. I've got lunch assignment lined up for next Friday. Every, for all the next Friday, I've got lined up already. And I got some certain restaurants I really like. I like Brown and Love down at River Market. I love that place. It's in and out real easy. It's right north of downtown. A lot of our customers are downtown. Um, taking the customers to Rosos. I like the Rosos. Uh, Q39 Barbecue, anybody a fan? I've taken more customers of Q39 Barbecue than you can believe. Well, until COVID hit. And even then, they were taking people. Uh, be friendly, ask for off the radar negotiated work. They really like you, trust you, know you, and you have good pricing to get negotiated work. But you got to work long and hard to get negotiated work. You know, they're going to really like you, know you, trust you. Look for design build. Um, would you do design build if you got offered it? Do you have designers in, in house? No, because we have them on contract. How much would you be willing to pay your designers? to take a good look and have a good number on a design build project. What would you be willing to spend on a speculative basis? No, you know, no, no payment. How much, they go, hey, what's your first name? Helen. Helen. We're going to be doing a parking garage over here. We need a lot of steel. But the owner will pay the engineer to design the, the steel structure. Would you guys design and give me a price? As I say, what's going through your mind? Qualifying, qualifying, qualifying. Do I know you? Do I? Yeah. You're, you're qualifying. Your brain is like a supercomputer, and you're qualifying. Who are they? When's it going to go? How much do I need to do with it? Right? It's by ten decisions. You took about four seconds to come back to me. Your brain was thinking about ten different things at one time. Who are they? Do we know them? Do we trust them? Do we like them? Who's got the money? Is it, how's it funded? Right? It's amazing how we we'll always be qualifying. It's amazing what happens. Look for off the radar work. That's my favorite. The heights of Linden Square was off the radar. Never hit a plan room, ever. How cool is that? Okay. This is Jeffrey Gittimer. Everything else being, everything else being uh, equal, people do business with their friends, right? I haven't seen this slide in a long time. What's it say? You are precisely singing this song that will make the sale easier to achieve. He's kind of crazy. You can watch him on. He's on uh, LinkedIn every day. This is really cool, right? They want to do business with their friends because they want to trust you like you know. But when something, hits the, when something hits the fan, they want to call you and say, hey, it's not going well. You know, you guys aren't delivering. Wait a minute, let me talk to you. Um, that's a good um, thing to learn about is uh, buying motives. My favorite book is by Dr. Chiodini. It's called Influence, The Art of Persuasion. I've read it five times now. It's really good. You guys ever heard of the 20, you guys heard of Warren Buffett? You know, who's his partner? Who's Warren, Warren Buffett's partner? Charlie. 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 Charlie.
So he has a list of the 25 things that motivate people. And one of them is called the law of reciprocation. You know what that means? I give you a bottle of wine, you owe me a favor. But if you take it, subconsciously, you owe me something, right? Give me customer's gifts. It sounds crazy, but you little gifts, you know? Something. So the law of reciprocation by Charlie Munger. It's a true story. So design build, I love design build. Because we control the, uh, the scope of work, we control the quality, we control everything. And we make a little bit more money typically. So we spend more, we spend money though, to do design build. This is corporate woods. I got invited by a company to uh, tear out, on the upper left you see the old uh, sidewalks. We designed the sidewalk, we didn't put them in there. But we designed it and put the landscape in. That's pretty good, right? It was like a $65,000 deal. But man, it was cool. I love design build. The one on the left, that's called Moyes Eye Center up off of uh, 52. And Dr. Moyes, uh, I don't know if you guys know uh, Mike Johnson. He was, he's passed away, but he was with Excel Constructors. He was a president and owner, one of the owners. He invited me to do this Moyes Eye Center because the landscape architect had screwed the design. We redesigned it, doubled the price. Doctor bought it. There you go. Drive by sometimes. It's beautiful. I love design. Design build is great. If you can do design build, if you get designers in your house that can help you at least do conceptual designs, you can sell some design build. Take look at this at the very bottom. Again, take customers to lunch. Run out of time here. Um, da, 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 okay. On a bid form, use the bid form. Also attach your proposal, right? You guys get these bid forms now, right? You're gonna do a bid form, you gotta upload it to Building Connected. Attach your proposal also on your letterhead with all your exclusions. They don't let you put all your exclusions on these bid forms, right? Um, become certified. So I'm a certified landscape technician, CLT. And you know what? Um, I think it's got me a lot of deals. I'm a subject matter expert on landscaping and irrigation. <coughs> Give lunch and learn presentations. Every architecture firm, every general contractor has a days and times to decide where their subs are coming to give presentations, design build. 80% of, of all, most salespeople give up after one follow-up call. That's a waste. Who do I call here? I call right? I'm, pretty, I'm pretty persistent, aren't I? Friendly? Which, we got to know we're going down the road together, right? I want to know. Okay, so this is what we went over today. A lot of stuff. 